Hi, um, welcome. Um, my name is Destiny O'Connor, and uh, I'm co-chair for Deaf and Hard of Healing Working Group, and I'm a web developer for Women Blessing Women, and this is my co-speaker, uh, Rian Clahan. Hi, I'm a program manager with the Next Foundation. My name is Rian Clainons, and I also work on the DAC Contributor Strategy, helping new contributors getting involved in open source. So this is just more about us. Uh, when we started contributing, I started contributing to the Deaf and Hard of Hearing Working Group um, to Cloud Native last year. And um, yeah. So before we dive into how to contribute, uh, I just want to give you some basic information on what is Cloud Native and what is open source. So Cloud Native is a building app that are designed um, to thrive in the cloud and make apps flexible and using tools like containers and microservices and handle changing demands um, smoothly. And open source is really for anyone, whether you're a developer, um, a designer, or an editor, or a writer, whatever your skill set is, you have a place in open source. And not everyone is not technical. And if you are technical, you already know the deal. Everybody knows GitHub. But some of us don't, and you can join. Your perspective can make a difference, and you can bring a lot to the table, even though you're not technical. So we need to know why contribution is valuable. Contributing to open source is just not about making code. It's about building skills, making connections, and giving back. It allows you to work from people from all over the world, and together you can come up with new ideas and a new way to uh, shape the tech that we all use every day. And I will get into how we, how we get started, or how I got started. So my journey as a deaf, um, self-taught web developer, it hasn't been easy. Because you know when you travel around going to school or networking or looking for a job, the basic necessity that I need is accessibility. And most of the time, I don't get it. So it makes it very challenging for me to even move forward or whatever I want to do. So one day, I was on LinkedIn, and I saw someone post. Um, they have a deaf and hard working group in Cloud Native. Now, mind you, I know nothing about Kubernetes. I know nothing about Cloud Native. Um, I knew about Linux Foundation, but everything else I didn't know. But the fact that they had Deaf and Hard of Hearing, I was like, hey, I got to join. Whatever it is, I got to get there. I got to be there. So when I joined, um, I joined the Flat Channel. That's what they posted on LinkedIn. And I expressed my concerns like, hey, you know, I don't know nothing about Cloud Native. I don't know anything about Kubernetes. They were very welcoming. They said, OK, no worries. Just come to our meeting and see if this is something you want to do. And after that, after joining the meeting, I, I felt in place. I was like, I have to be there. So that's when I started feeling like I belong. And I've been here since then, from last year. So since then, what we have been doing, we've been creating documentation of best practices. Um, how to make the conferences more accessible. And since then, our working group grown over to 120 members, and we're creating a sign language glossary for Cloud Native. And we are doing that without writing a single line of code. So like I said, any, you can contribute any type of way. So let's get into that, how um, Cloud Native made that possible by introducing you to all the um, Cloud Native uh, why community groups. So we have um, different types of groups. They are shared into come together, support projects, share knowledge, best practice um, in the cloud native space. These groups are open to anyone, whether you're looking to learn um, or have expertise to share. They cover topics like um, security, observability, storage, and connecting people across projects and tackle broad issues and impact the entire ecosystem. To focus more on specific areas, Cloud Native have a technical advisory group, which is called TAD, and let's get into that, and then how they support contributors. 
Oops, sorry. So, tab oversees and coordinate interests in specific areas for users and projects. Tabs focus on specific cloud native topics like networking, security, app delivery, and they connect, contribute to share interests that discuss best practices, guides, and cloud native projects in these areas. Tabs is a great way to deepen your expertise and your core issue to shape cloud native tech. So even if you're just starting out and you don't know where to start, you can reach out to tags. So with the community group and your support system, let's get into the step on how to start contributing. So these are all the open source projects. Now I know you see there's a lot of projects. All of these are not cloud native projects. Some of them are Linux Foundation and 30 other um, open source projects. So, Whilst Cloud Native doesn't create the tools, it hosts and mutual projects. Each plays a unique role in, in, with contribution around the world. So let's talk about Kubernetes. Kubernetes is one of the star projects and it just hit a 10 year mark. It completely changed how companies handle apps in the cloud and it set the bar for modern um, infrastructure. So Kubernetes has thousands of contributors all over, showing how powerful open source can be. It's an example of people worldwide coming together to get something different. Kubernetes is one of the many projects in this amazing community behind it, and we will get into that. So well, I'm gonna teach you how to find a project, navigate open source, and contribute as a beginner and show you the available resources that we have and help you recognize your unique um, perspective and how to leverage it. So now let's talk about the um, different projects. So when you explore, um, oh, so it's okay to look. It's okay to look, it's okay to, you know, look around, see stuff, you know, privately. But for me, it didn't work because I felt like the more I was looking, the more I was just sitting there watching stuff happen and I'm just standing by and doing nothing. So it's okay to be a detective. That's my way of saying it. Go in, ask questions, ask people. There will be someone there for you to answer your question. Even if you ask someone and they don't know, most of the time they will lead you to someone that knows what they're doing and that can help you. One of the first places to start is GitHub. So have you guys heard of GitHub before or used it before? If not, I would suggest you to join and sign up. And I know GitHub, when you first join, it might feel like overwhelming. You're like, oh no, I don't know nothing about this. I don't know no coding. I don't know what am I looking at. Oh, I understand it's okay. I started off like that too. I just had help. Rian helped me a lot with that. And then finding a project. <laughs> you might feel like this. It's just over and over again. You're looking at the project. It's too much. You don't know where to start. It's understandable, it's okay. We all, here, we all start somewhere. So this is the GitHub page for Cloud Native. You start there. You can just search in the search bar, look for Cloud Native, and you can see their page. And then you can see different stuff that they have, like Kubernetes is on there, um, different projects, discussions, any ideas that you might want to contribute, you can look on there. Once you get comfortable navigating GitHub, check out the landscape. It's almost like the project position that I showed you. And this is more, more of it. So these projects are um, organized by maturity, showing whether they're in sandbox, incubating, or graduated stages. Each project has a link to their website, social media, stat, give you a sense of activity and community size. Like this, the profile. So it has, you can see all on the side, it has GitHub, it has the social media, all that, you can click on that to learn more about the project. So I'll use Kubernetes as an example. We have different tools like um, Cloud Tributor. You can go there 
and look there and to see any beginner um, project. They have like help wanted or, um, you know, different stuff, good first issue. Those things will help you get started. And then we have the project board, all on GitHub as well. You can see the labels where it says help wanted, um, different groups. That will help you get started as well. Most of the project boards and repos have issues. This is like a community board where everyone is asking for a specific task, project, or group, or working, and so on. So when you see the issues you can work on, reach out and ask if it's still available, because sometimes most someone is working on it. And see what the progress is. And then that's when you start introducing yourself. Don't be afraid to introduce yourself when you're starting a project. So just say, hi, hey, I'm looking um, to learn more about this project. Can you help me? Simple as that. Once that's established, you can start contributing through pull requests or PR on GitHub. So on a pull request, this is how you submit your contribution to a project. After working on an issue, you create a PR to propose your changes. The project managers will uh, review your PR to make sure it meets the guidelines and the project standards, and then either merge it or provide feedback. And this is a collaborative process. So don't worry if you made revision and then you get it back and it didn't merge. And just take it out. You're learning. You move forward and keep trying. And remember, every contribution matters. No matter how small, it makes a difference. Let's wrap this up with some tips on how to stay engaged and continue growing together. So I'll give you an example for a pull request for our working group. We made documentation. There's nothing to do with code, but our documentation leads to how to make conferences more accessible. So we started off with a Google Doc, and we had everybody contribute to the doc. And then we polished it up, and then we moved it over to GitHub, and then we asked the project managers to give their feedback, what to do next. I didn't even know how to do a pull request. I literally had to ask someone, hey, can you help me out how to merge this doc? And that's when I reached out to Vian. And you might wonder, how did I do that as a deaf person when I don't have an interpreter or a certain thing? So I know that I can talk, but I can't hear. So I had to use closed captions. When we did video calls, I used that. Sometimes we have interpreters available, and we made it happen. And the, the most important thing is he asked, what do I need to make sure that I got the information that I need to do this? So when we did that, we finally made the doc, and I did my first pull request, and I was so excited. <laughs> so yes, it's as simple as that. So when you engage in the community, like I just said, when you ask questions, it leads to more things. So you'll be learning and do more than you think, attending to meetings, watching recordings, and tackling small tasks. Different communities communicate in different places. Some of them use Slack, some of them use GitHub, or the issues, mailing lists, or Zoom meetings. You will just have to reach out and see where the community are talking. So let's get into how you can contribute in a non-technical way. So like how I do, I make documentation. And we have translation, um, event organization, mentoring, community outreach, um, even organiz um, sorry. Each of these areas play a crucial role in building inclusive, accessible, and well-supported projects. So we do documentation, and we even do an assign language glossary, which is translation. We're making the uh, cloud native glossary into sign language. You guys check it out. It's pretty cool. <laughs> so by contributing consistently, any of these areas, you can make a significant impact in these communities. You will want to grow as a um, contributor. So just smart, start small. Build your confidence with small tasks and continue contributing. And just remember, consistent contributors, even small ones, lead to growth. I never thought I'd be standing here 
the, when I started last year. I never thought I'd be standing here giving this talk on how to contribute. Just a year ago, I know nothing about pull requests and everything that I've just, just told you. So I want you to embrace the open source mindset. Don't be afraid to show up. Put yourself out there. Mistakes happen. Feedback is part of learning. Approach everything with good intention and trust that the community is here to help you. So even if you feel like it was a critical feedback, just assume that it was a good intention and express whatever feelings that you have. With this mindset, let's open up for any questions that you might have. So, you guys have any questions? <laughs> we do have a mic that we can hand out, so if there's any questions, you're more than welcome. I'm not sure it's directly related to... A little closer to the oh, Sorry, yeah. I'm not sure it's directly related to what we've discussed, um, but I came here for the purpose of how do I convince my boss that me contributing to open source is a net benefit for us as well as everyone else? Because it's, uh, it's been a challenge to try convince our higher-ups to um, let our team do this. Um, and we're sort of having to make hacky work around for things when we could be contributing that back to the community. So if I understand your question correct, how do you convince your employer yep. that contributing to open source is worth your while? Exactly, yeah, yeah. There is a few ways. So it depends on what you're working on. Mm -hmm. Find a project that actually slots into what your company is developing. If you're developing software, the open source landscape, say you're in cloud native, if you look at the open source landscape, there's unbelievable amount of projects. The CNC have got over 200 projects. There's something useful for everybody. Sure. So find the things that's useful for your company, start pulling that into your, your code by start using it, build on top of open source, sure. and then the next thing you know, you need a feature. Mm -hmm. And then you say to the company, well, we want to build this feature, and we want to push it into the open source afterwards. And in that way, your feature, net, not only you will be working on your future, but when the feature hits the public repos, the rest of the, the, the um, community can also improve your feature. And if your future is really useful, you'll get a lot of feedback on your feature, additionals to your feature. Mm -hmm. The other way is you vote with your feet. If the company that you work for doesn't support open source, doesn't want to work on open source, just keep on pulling in open source, consume it, wrap it, and sell it, mm -hmm. um, they're not into open source, they're into open source consumption. Unless sure. you contribute, you're not into open source. So mm -hmm. find an employer, don't jump off the ship and start swimming. When you see another one and it looks promising, go where your love for open source is supported. Amazing, thank you. Uh, one of the ways to contribute about, about contributing to open source is like if your employer is not actually supporting your contribution to open source, then what you can do is you know about KubeCon, you come to KubeCon and you present at KubeCon and you buy your employer t-shirt and branding and that way linking your employer knows that you are speaking and gets free visibility. So that goes a lot, and slowly I think you start small and then they see the recognition, and then they will say, no, this makes sense, this really makes sense. That is also one of the ways. Thank you, Sandeep. Any other questions about getting started in open source? And this is open for anything about. If, you have, if you're just looking how to get your foot in the door. Yes. Great job, I loved it. I have a question about how can you get a talk selected as someone new in the community? Because it's quite hard, honestly, to get a talk accepted at any KubeCon, co-located, any of these events. Very, very difficult. So I'm just wondering if you have any advice about that. All right. Um, 
How do you get selected for the national team? This is kind of the national team. So, if you want to play in the national team, I think we have to be extraordinary like Destiny, or start at your local team. There's a lot of local uh, meetups, local events. Start there. Get involved with your local community where you have local talks and build up a resume that um, reflect that you have experience in um, find specific areas where there's a shortage of speakers. So getting the chance to speak is not that easy, just starting cold, come to KubeCon, nobody knows who you are, nobody's seen your work and say, I want to do this. There is extraordinary talented people in this community and to be the one to be selected to have the opportunity, you have to have a, a bit of a track record build up over time. But whenever you have the opportunity, so sometimes I get opportunities where, uh, so there's a university, they want, their students want to know about open source. So I speak to the university class, sometimes online, something in, in person, speak to the university, speak to your local code club, speak to your, at your schools, and practice preparing and practice and decide what is the thing that you actually want to say. And develop that over time and you become, and then you come, come play in the, the KubeCon space. Uh, yes, so um, like I said, most of the conferences are not accessible. So for us to make this working group is pretty big and it makes a big impact because we are here, deaf people are here and we don't have any access to information like this. So us making the working group and making the documentation, it, it made a big impact. So when we got the talk, we all excited. Sandeep had a talk. I had a talk last year, so we're trying to get in there. We're working hard. We're like, we're promoting, we're posting stuff on um, open, like GitHub. We're just talking. We're talking like we were just talking in the group um, a few hours ago. Just get out there. Work with your feet. That's the first step. Yeah, and I think what, what to, to add what Destiny said, if you want to submit a talk at KubeCon, you say, I'm going to talk about AI. You're one of about 500 other people that want to talk about AI. Find a topic where there's not expertise. Find a topic where you are the expert. And there's one or two people to choose from. And then, obviously, you stand a better chance than being in the back of a queue of 500. Yes. Yes, do you have a question? Hello. Uh, my name is Roger. Thank you for your presentation. I, um, so uh, this is my first KubeCon, and one of the things I was wondering about is um, how do you create a project? Because you showed um, there's like a project board, right? But if you wanted to create a new project, um, how do you do that? And what have you seen makes a project successful, like uh, to grow? Like any, yeah. OK. Um, Making a project is making a product. It is something that needs a consumer. So mm -hmm. the CNCF has a process for bringing projects into the CNCF. So the first step is a sandbox project where you bring your project and demonstrate, okay, I have this thing that solves this problem um, mm -hmm. and it is cloud native, would you like to adopt it? Mm -hmm. Then it goes to um, incubation and then it goes to graduation where Kubernetes and all the other bigger projects are. But getting to sandbox, you first need to develop something that work. Mm -hmm. it, you need somebody that needs it. There's, uh, just having a good idea isn't a product. Mm -hmm. Having end users is a product. So um, I actually just had a, a discussion with a project on the show floor that they want to donate. And they made a very good comment. They said, somebody advised us when we want to join the CNCF as a project, they need to pull us, we don't want to push it. Yeah. So your, the, your product must be so compelling and there must be such an adoption around you from other users mm -hmm. that say, we need this thing. In, so getting pulled in is better than trying to push it in. Yeah. So build something cool, get it socialized, get people to start adopting it and if you arrive with 10 or 20 or 30 adopter companies and say, these people are already using it, but we want to put it out to the whole world so we can 
get all the, the benefits of Kubernetes, of, of uh, cloud native. Okay. And you saw this morning, uh, we had the key keynotes, mm -hmm. where they discussed the, yeah. about trolling of the, uh, the patents. Mm -hmm. That's why you want to come in. When you have a product that might get trolled, yeah. come, come into the fold, you're amongst friends, and they'll help you protect and look after your product, project. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Go build something cool. Ryan and Destiny, thank you very much for your presentation. Corey Leong, Valencia College, I, I teach cloud computing courses, and every semester I host boot camps for my students. I would love to be able to present something like this to my students to involve them and to contribute upstream. So my first question is, may I have a copy of these slides? And the second question is, may I use them to uh, show to my students? This is open source. Yes. Can I? Okay. I, I will have a QR code for you at the end of the class, after our Q&A. Great. Thank you very much. In other places, they call that stealing. Here, we call it open source. <laughs> yeah. Everything's available, and the recording will be available on YouTube later. You're welcome to share that, and you're welcome to use the material. And if you want a stellar speaker to address you, your students via Zoom, I can recommend Destiny. Anyone have any more questions? Very good. Hi, thank you. Um, for Destiny, I'm curious, you know, you've put yourself out there, you contributed. Uh, have you found that it's sort of given back to you? Uh, it's been helpful in your personal or professional life in any way, um, the harmonious cycle uh, between open source and, you know, your personal life and all that. Thank you. Um, yes. So when I first started, I had nothing. I maybe had some cute little um, GitHub um, repos. That was it. But since I've started, I've got a lot of recognition from um, a lot of people. Google just gave me an award for breaking barriers. Um, that was really exciting. And I became a keynote speaker last year. I never thought in a million years I would be a keynote speaker. So that happened last year, we were talking about um, accessibility. And jobs are now asking me like, hey, what do you need? Like, what can we do to help you? So I would say it gotten easier for me to um, come to conferences and have the accessibility that I need. So yeah, it, it improved my life. Not a lot, but we still need a lot of work, but that's why I'm still here to keep doing the work and keep going and improve it even more and more, yeah. It's been an inspiring experience. Okay. Any more questions? Okay. So, I want to talk more about my deaf and hard of hearing working group. And um, what we would like to be deaf in tech and know what our community can do to improve accessibility. So, you can uh, visit our kiosk that we have. Um, where is it again? It's in uh, Pavilion. In the Project Pavilion, you'll find them. Uh, they've got a booth in the Project Pavilion. Yeah, Project. That's where we are. So just come and say hi. Even if you never met a deaf person before, you're wondering how you can communicate with us, it's okay. We can teach you. Uh, we can try and work it out. So just come and meet with us and visit us. And this is a QR code to our Slack channel to learn to, um, if you're passionate about it or you want to be an ally, that's our Slack channel. You're welcome to join. And Say hello and introduce yourself. Oh, well, I have one more. <laughs> I just want to make sure everybody got the QR code. We good? Okay. And then this is our um, this is our team schedule for all the talks that we had last year. We probably have like one, two, three, maybe three, maybe three ish. So this is a really big deal, and most of us have talks. Um, all week, and we have a couple more on Friday. We do have a panel with all deaf panels, so I will encourage you guys to come to to see what it's like. And um, this is our DHA program, so you can see the different stuff that we have. And then we have a uh, craft course on Thursday, I believe. Yeah, so you come and learn some sign language, learn ASL, and learn more about us. So I thank you all for coming. We're truly excited. I'm willing to see all of you contribute something. Um, 
meet with me to talk more if you want to learn more. The QR code is to access to the slides and more link to all the resources that I've just shown you on my um, presentation. So thank you. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>